Welcome to Statistics Unit 2 Lesson 3. This is about density curves and normal distributions and the lesson is called Can You Predict the Shape? Okay, please turn to Can You Predict the Shape? First of all, I'm going to describe to you what we did in class if you missed class. So the first thing what we did is I had every single person in the class roll a die three times and then they would record the results which you can see in this spot right here. Okay, and then I asked them to predict if if they did it many, many times, or meaning if there's 30 people in the class, which there were, and everyone did it three times, there's going to be 90 results. Predict about what it's going to look like. And so this might have been a prediction, okay? The actuality is what's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty flat. And let's think about this. The reason it's gonna be pretty flat across is because I have a one-sixth probability to roll a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, or a six, an equal probability to roll anything that I have on the dice. Because I have an equal probability, I'm gonna have a flat curve, that there's no curve, excuse me, it's just gonna be flat across, and this is for rolling a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Because it's symmetric, the mean and median are smack in the middle, and they're also equal to each other. And the area under the curve is equal to one. It's a density curve and the area under it is equal to one. And the reason being is if you see how far is this, that's six and how high is it? The probability is one sixth. So six times one sixth is equal to one. And interestingly enough, the area under the curve, which we're going to be going for Torf, is one means 100% under this curve. So 100% and a decimal is if we move it over two places, is just one. The reason this is called a uniform distribution is because it's straight across and has no hills and valleys, nothing up and down. Okay, the next thing I had them do is to toss a penny. And what I had them do is basically on their desk, I did this and I drew an X on everybody's desk. And I had them attempt to toss a penny right smack on that X. And for everyone they missed, here's the penny, let's say, I had them take a ruler and measure the distance from the X to the ruler and put their answer in um, centimeters. And I had them round to the nearest tenth. So I had them do it one, two, three times, and then the same thing, I asked them to predict with three times times 30 students of 90 particular flips, what would it look like? And maybe this was one of the predictions, but then the actual prediction was this, and let's talk about it, or excuse me, the actual histogram, and this is what our data looked like. The reason being is because the best, the, the lowest I can get is zero. Zero is perfect, where back here in my, in my illustration, basically it's landing the penny directly on top of the X, and that would be zero. I can't be any lower than zero. Most people we found had somewhere in this ballpark between 20 and 30 centimeters away from our target. And so most of the data is sitting right up here. And, um, so, but there were occasionally, the way I had it is if you flipped it off the desk, you know, here's the mark, and if you flipped it off the desk, let's say over here, basically you pretended like the desk had an, uh, it was extended and you brought it up into an indivisible plane and you measured it from this area. So um, uh, some of them did go off the desk and we had, you know, out here, but most of them were right here. So that's why it's skewed to the right. Because it's skewed to the right, the mean is actually pulled toward the outliers because let's look at a simple example. Let's say if I have one, this is just data, let's say someone was one centimeter away, someone was two centimeters away, and someone was three centimeters away. Just doing something really simple. Obviously the mean is gonna be one plus two is three, plus three is six divided by three is going to be two. And so that's the mean. The median is also the middle number, so the mean and the median are the same. However, let's say instead of one, two, and three, I now am gonna change this to one, two, and let's say 30. So, so much different. The median doesn't change, it's still the middle number, it's still two, but because this is such a large outlier, it's going to pull the mean away from the median, and that's why the mean is gonna be larger than the median. Because now I have one plus two is three, plus 30 is 33 divided by three, and that's 11. And you can see that is way greater than the mean of the median of two. So the mean is going to be to the right of the median when it's skewed to the right. So what is it gonna be when it's skewed to the left? When it's skewed to the left, if the median is here, the mean is going to be to the left because the low numbers are pulling the mean to the left. 
So the last experiment I had them do is I had them take their iPhone and try to stop it right at five seconds exactly. So then I had them put one, two, and three attempts right here that they got. And you know, someone had this prediction of a histogram or whatever, but this was the actual histogram that we got. And this is a, a distribution that we call approximately normal because it's unimodal. Unimodal means one peak. See one mode, one peak right here bell-shaped curve, and then it's symmetric, unimodal and symmetric. This one up here is unimodal. There's one hump, but it's not symmetric. It's skewed to the right. This one is unimodal and symmetric. So unimodal and symmetric. The mean and the median are about the same, as you can see, because, they're, because it's symmetric. But the reason that it's going to be like this is most people were aiming for, I mean, everybody, excuse me, was aiming for five seconds. But the people that were missing were missing a little low and a little high and pretty evenly distribu distributed as far as how many missed low and how many missed high. And so that's why we have an even distribution here. Okay, so the three things that I want you guys to learn from this lesson is first of all, density curves. The an area under a density curve is one. So basically what I'm saying is this area here if shaded, is 100%. If it's straight across, this is called a uniform distribution. An equal probability for every outcome is what a uniform distribution does. An equal probability for every outcome. Okay, the second learning target I want you guys to see are the three types of distributions that I just discussed. Symmetric is where the mean and the median are approximately the same. Skewed right is when the median is here, but the mean is pulled to the right because of these outliers over here, like the example that I did with one, two, and 30. Skewed left would be completely the opposite, where if this is the median, then the mean is going to be pulled to the left because of the low outliers that are going to be pulling it to the left. And finally, the third, learning target I have is about normal distribution. Normal distribution is a density curve. So if it's a density curve, what's the area under here? You're exactly right, it is one. So if the area is one, then under here, if I shaded the whole thing, then 100% is shaded. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about the area shaded. In doing so, is let's talk about here, is that the normal mu is equal to the mean, and this is equal to the standard deviation. And so this here, it has a funny, I, I kind of went right over it. I'm gonna, <laughs> the highlighter's so dark. Let me see if I can change that. There we go, that's better. So the mean, there we go. And the standard deviation, mu, this is means mean, and this here, here it means standard deviation. And a density curve here that's a normal distribution is symmetric, single peaked, and bell-shaped. We're gonna learn more about the, spe the specific attributes that normal distribution has in the next few lessons. Okay, let's look at the check for understanding. The check for understanding says draw the density curve to the model in the amount of time after an hour at which the request received by the web server. So here we have um, the same thing. The height is one out of 36 and the length is 36. So of course, you know what's the area under here, which of course, you know the area of the whole thing is going to be one. So this says about what proportion of requests are received within the first five minutes. Five minutes is 300 seconds. Of course, the way we got 300 seconds is five times 60, and that's 300. 60 seconds, five minutes. There's 60 seconds in each minute. So what we're gonna look at is we're just gonna look at after 300 seconds, 300 is let's say about here. So we're looking for here, and that's gonna be 300 divided by 3,600, and that's 0.083, which if we move the decimal over two times, basically that's about 8.3% of this shaded. Find the IQR of this distribution. IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So the first step is to find Q3. Remember, Q means quartile, and that means quarter. And so think about a quarter, how much is it worth? It's worth 25 cents, so Q1, is 25 cents, so 25%. Q3 is 75%, there's three quarters. 
So 75% of the data minus 25% of the data. So step one is to find Q3. So 75% of the data times 3,600 is 2,700. And then 25% of the data times 3,600 is 900. And then we're going to find the IQR, which the formula is Q3 minus Q1, and that gets you 1,800 seconds. And don't forget to label the seconds. What is the mean of the density curve? The mean or the balance point, you add everything up, is the midpoint of the symmetric distribution. Since the distribution looks exactly perfect halfway and it's zero and that's 3,600, then it's just gonna be halfway in between because it's actually cut in half perfectly, which that's why it's 1,800. The median is also going to be 1,800 because it's a perfectly symmetric distribution. It's going to be the exact same. All right, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.